three wide. I'm going to back out from that. I'm going to instead get the cut back. Up ahead, there's contact, and we've been tagged. This video is going to be a race featuring some of the worst F1 cars of the last 20, 25 years. Now, I did a bit of a brainstorm along with also asking you guys on Twitter some of the worst cars you've seen, and we have a final list of 20. Starting off with the car that I'll be driving in this video, the 2019 Williams, which of course, George Russell had a great year, but generally that car was a shambles. They were late to pre-season. They were super behind schedule on upgrades. And generally for Williams, it was a very, very bad year. We then go to the 2021 Haas, which of course they chose that year to basically postpone development and move all resources into 2022, which meant this car got no love. We then say hello to an icon. And to be fair, a bit of an exception on this list. Most cars here have not scored a single championship point, but the 2015 McLaren Honda did score points. However, it's arguably the most unreliable car on this entire grid. And for McLaren, the team they are, this car was an embarrassment for them. We then go to another car in 2015, and that is the Manor car, which of course they as a team just survived out of 2014. And with a bit of a restructuring, made it into 2015, but basically with no development and essentially a year old car. We then go to 2014 and we start off with the Sauber car, which many people don't really talk about, but they scored zero points, a donut in 2014, and they just generally weren't very impressive. This car is arguably the worst car ever. We stay in 2014 and we have this thing. Ugh. We now go back to the V8s, and this is going to be one of its younger brothers, the 2012 Caterham, which to be fair, was not terrible, but still, donut. And we're going to see plenty of those donuts coming up right now. Another one, the 2012 Marussia, which they showed improvement, but another donut. I could have put the 2013 car in here as well, but to be fair, 2013 was actually not terrible, even though they scored no points. They showed probably their strongest package after four years, but this was uh, still not quite there and here we go hrt need i say more there's a couple more of these on the grid but this is the 2012 their last car and yeah to be fair this one was pretty poor we then go to 2011 lotus or caterham once again that was the kind of year where they transitioned from the identity of lotus into caterham but need i say more the most iconic thing from this year for them was haki kovalainen's angry birds helmet we then have the 2011 Marussia, which of course also changed identity in 2011. So they started off as Virgin, then switched to Marussia very early on. And I mean, look at the car. It kind of looks like a GP2 car at the time rather than an F1 car. We now have an icon, the 2011 HRT, a car which was known for basically having empty logo spots and, you know, your logo here. This is a cool spot and trying to bring in advertisement into the team. And this was the car that gave Daniel Ricciardo his debut in Formula 1. We now go to 2010, and this was the year the three new teams debuted. And Lotus, for me, had the best car that year, and it also looked the best. We also have the 2010 version, which, of course, before Marussia took over the team, they were merely a sponsor on the car. Also, arguably their best-looking car out of all the ones they had. And we have yet another iconic car. This one was a pretty sh car. Very, very bad the beginning of the HRT era, before they kind of got some developments and improved a little bit, their very first car was horrific. And it's a shame that the name Senna is attached to this. Back in time, 2008, and this is a car which I have a soft spot for. I loved how this car looked, and I don't know why I always rooted for the back markers, and this was one that I heavily rooted for growing up watching F1 as an 11-year-old at the time. And it's a 2008 Force India, which of course may have scored points in that Monaco race had Kimi Raikkonen not driven into the back of Adrian Sutil. Also that year was the Super Aguri, which only took part in a handful of races before they ceased to exist as an F1 team. They weren't actually that slow, but the fact they'd done a handful of races and basically couldn't turn up due to funding was quite poor and embarrassing. The year before that, they were actually pretty decent with that iconic overtake of Takuma Sato at Canada on Alonso, but 2008 was just not that good. So from the 2008 Force India, we go to one of its predecessors two years before to Midland Toyota, which also was pointless and generally was a very forgetful year for the team in their first season in the post-Jordan era. 
Now, just like with the Midland and, you know, Force India connection, Super Aguri, they stopped in 2008 and they debuted in 2006. And this car was the machine to start with. This car was awful. Partially an icon in terms of the bad cars, also notably because they had some very bad drivers besides Takuma Sato, who was the one shining light in the entire team. However, their debut car had a chassis from a 2002 car four years prior, which says a lot about how slow they were. And last but not least, listen, we're talking about bad cars and back markers. I had to put Minardi in there and show them some love. This is the 2001 car, which of course gave Fernando Alonso his debut in Formula One. However, they scored no points and was a car to forget because the Minardis after that did actually have some moments where they kind of stood out in 2002, 3, 4 and 5 before they stopped existing. So this was their last car that was pointless. So guys, if you're going to enjoy this video, let's try and smash over a thousand likes, maybe even 1250. I want to see them likes guys and show your love for the video and comment down below which one of these cars was your favorite or which did you like the most more like and which one did you just hate or just don't like at all i'd love to know your thoughts and also any surprise candidates which i have left out such as the 97 lola which is uh, a story in itself anyway we've got through turn one and that is the main thing which i'm looking for but yeah give me your thoughts down below i want to hear what you guys think of some of these cars and uh, some of the memories you have. Currently up towards turn three, everyone seems to have got through unscathed, which is very encouraging for Assetto Corsa. AI, we're gonna get past the 2015 mana straight away of Alexander Rossi. So that's one down and that's P19. We're now challenging the 2014 Caterham here as we look up the inside of turn number four. Getting very close to the back end of the pass there. 21 Hass in the hands of Mick Schumacher. The 2014 k in the hands of Kamu Kobayashi. I've chosen the more iconic drivers for this video as we go up the inside of JB, Jensen Button, in the 2015 McLaren. And we're now P17, so already making excellent progress. You see the Haas also carving through. I think he's going to be our main rival, Mick Schumacher. So looking to hopefully make some progress as we get past, I think that's the 2012 Marussia in the hands of Timo Glock. Is that Glock? I'm not sure. I think it is. Turn one. Brief yellow flag, but everyone getting through. And now we're going to get the run here on the 21 Hass. I'm not going to use a DRS. I'm going to just run without it because some of these cars don't have it. The Hass carves past the 2011 Lotus Caterham. I don't know what to call it, so we'll call it both. Great exit from us, though. Out of turn three, we're going to challenge Mick here. As we race towards turn four, Mick pulls ahead with the DRS. And Mick also challenges and passes Adrian Sutil. 2014 Sauber, Sutil tries to barge back through as the Germans put up a fight. Easy does it. Around the outside, we're going to use the downforce here to nail it around the outside of Sutil. And we're going to now get Schumacher and we're going to get the 2012 Caterham in the hands of Vitaly Petrov. Now behind one of the HRTs, the 2011 car, a bit driven by Daniel Ricciardo. And we're going to get through. Happy days. I may have actually put Carter Kine in that car, to be fair. The legend himself. Cucumber Challenge, if you guys know where that's from. Shout out to you guys in the comments. Let me know if you know that reference. So P11. In the hills of Ostrich, by the way, you can see I've set to kind of autumn to kind of match the time of year. So the low sunlight and uh, all the kind of autumn trees. We've got the 2012 HRT, I believe, next up. So that will bring us into the points, into the top 10. We are driving as Robert Kubica, if I haven't mentioned that. Oh, that's a bit wide. That's very wide. Keep it on the island top. There we go. Bring it back. A lap, so it's pretty much a sprint race especially around such a short lap so we have to get stuck in here and make these moves here we go now we're going to see the downforce kick in getting a great run and that is going to get us ahead i believe that's de la rosa also an icon before alonso arrived in f1 there was a de la rosa and that brings us into the top 10 and on to a virgin or marusha i don't know which one we're about to find out. Yellow flag at turn one. Someone has come a cropper. And it's the Midland 
2006 Midland on the outskirts there of Turn 1, so that gives us P9. I want to see what this car is ahead of us. I think it's a Marusha. And we've got another one off. That's a 2010 car, which whew, just hits our rear end, but we keep it in line, unlike the previous attempt. And uh, I think this is the 2011 Marusha ahead of us. Still can't get past, though. He's doing a good job. I believe that's in the hands of... I think it's Timo Glock as well. Is that Glock? I guess the, the mean does by itself. Come on. Here we go. Three. Let's go. Yep, that's Timo. I think I did the 2010 car, Lucas Degrassi. I chose Glock for the 2011 car. And I think I chose Charles Peak. I think it's Charles Peak for the 2012 car. So yeah, it wasn't Glock before. That was actually Glock. Anyway, half race distance. P7, three more cars up ahead. It's 2019 Williams. Feels like a 2020 Mercedes compared to some of these cars, I'm sure. And some of those guys are battling up ahead. I can see a couple more cars up at turn three. But they've got a pretty big cap, to be fair. So some of these guys have made a break for it. Up next, though, it's one of my personal favorites and a car that I have a soft spot for. The 2008 Force India. Underrated livery for me. I love the the red, gold and white. Before they went for the kind of Indian flag colours. Which also look really epic by the way. And I would have loved to put them in this video. But in 09, up until that iconic spa race. They were a pretty mid team. But that result means I can't really put them in here. So it's the 08 car. As we get the run again through there. We're going to get a tow. This is Giancarlo Fisichella. Could have gone with Sutil, but Giancarlo is a bit more, more, more of an iconic driver with a bit more of an iconic resume. And we go through and make the pass. And that brings us on to a Super Aguri, I think. The question is, which one? Trying to get a look. It's the 08 car. So Anthony Davidson behind the wheel in this one. Going to get a nice slipstream here all the way up to turn three we're going to pull out at the last second our break although Anthony holds his own bit of argy bargy bit of contact on the way through and Davidson gets back ahead so the V8 holding its ground I'm going to go back up the inside though into turn four Davidson holds on putting up a fight for P5 here Trying to use a downforce, but still no use. Maybe here. There we go. Slightly out of bounds, but my race, my rules. So that's P5. And with two laps to go, we'll see if we can salvage anything out of this race. You will see that car right ahead, but the podium's looking a bit distant. I'm trying to see in the far. Although yellow flag, this might just open up for us on a platter. And it's the 2014 Caterham off at turn one. Although we haven't gained a place, so he was a lap down. Kamui Kobayashi having a stinker as we get locked up into three. The right front just catches. I'm going to have to cheat now and use the DRS and crank up the engine mode here. Because if we want to push on... We have to catch up so here we go now we're going to start using the drs in the engine mode brake bias adjustment slightly to the rear to avoid front locking now we're going to start to push this uh i guess it's a bit of a box but it's uh, the best car on the grid here pretty much besides the Haas. so let's make use of it now let's try and push leader on the front lap already so we're almost half a lap down i don't think it's likely we get a podium but i want that p4 just up ahead so we're going to give it everything to try and catch. I can't tell what car it is. 2010 Lotus? Yellow flag again. Is that the same cage room of Kobayashi as before? Yes, it is. I think he's had enough. He just uh, doesn't want to drive that car anymore. I don't blame him. Come on, come on. Giving it full beans here. Yep, 2010 Lotus. My guess was correct, although... Another mistake there, just running in a bit too deep. I believe that's Yano Truly. 
up ahead. And I think we're going to miss out here. I'm going to push as hard as I can for these final corners and use the downfalls to try and close the gap. Come on, Williams. Give me everything you got, baby. Show me the pace. I think we're going to fall short here. We're going to close in massively for the last two corners. But I don't think it'll be enough. Truly is going to hold on and it's going to be P5 for us. So some of these cars have held on. Fair dues. So we know that's Yano P4. And there is the 2011 HRT backwards at turn one. But that wasn't for position. So... Let's see what the final order was. Here was P3. Who is it? It's the 2010 HRT. For P3? Yes, it is. Let's see where the others finished. Here we go then. Final finishing results. The winner, the 2006 Super Aguri in the hands of Takuma Sato. He won by 18 seconds. 19 seconds, pretty much. Absolute domination. So, Takuma showing... He's got the skills, of course, Indy 500 winner and was always a very quick driver, but maybe never had the tools to show. Also was a bit of an erratic and inconsistent driver, but Takuma getting the job done. We then have the 2001 Minardi with Fernando Alonso, again, arguably the best driver on this grid, driving possibly the worst car on this grid, but again, getting the job done second place. P3, Bruno Senna in the HRT. So HRT 2010 Possibly the worst car on this grid getting a podium. So some of these guys have outperformed their machinery. P4, Yano Trudy in the 2010 Lotus, we finish in P5 as Kibitza in the 19 Williams. Then it's both 08 cars, Super Aguri followed by Force India. And then it's going to be Marusha 2011, so Timo Glock in P8. Sutil P9 in the Sauber from 2014. And Della Rosa P12 in the 2012 HRT. We had a bunch of retirements, but the final three were the Marusha from 2015. So that's uh, Alexander Rossi. Um, P12, wow, the 21 Haas of Schumacher must have got caught up in some incidents because he finished a long way back. And then 2012 Caterham in the hands of Heike Kovalan, I believe. No, Vitaly Petrov. And then we have a bunch of retirements. Fittingly, the 2015 McLaren DNFs. The car known for unreliability, along with a bunch of others. So, yeah, guys, there is your lot. Hopefully, you enjoyed it. Like the video, subscribe. Down below, I'm going to leave all the mods that I can find in this one. I'll leave all the links for every single car. This is a set of cool set. If you guys want to drive some shit cars, you're welcome to do so. So, uh, yeah, give it a go. Let me know what you think. And hopefully you enjoy it. The track itself is original in a set of cool set. Austria is already in the game, so you don't have to download the mod for it. So bear that in mind. And yeah, cheers for watching, guys. As always, a big shout out to the members for supporting the channel and the content. Check out the two videos on screen if you haven't seen them already. And yeah, guys, cheers for watching. And I'll see you all in the next one. Take care. And let's go back from me.